Thank you very much. It's fantastic to be here. It's an honor to share my dreams with you. Um, and sorry for my English, my Czech is non-existent. <laughs> um, last August, I was uh, invited by Scania, the famous lorry producer. Um, you know, the king of the road. They have a griffin in their logo. Um, and they organized a um, conference on sustainability because they uh, introduced their new generation of trucks towards 2025. And um, we were all invited uh, to go to Paris. Uh, lucky me to, to join them. The weather was beautiful. It was a sunny day. Um, and we uh, were all invited in the Grand Palais in Paris. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's a monument and it's uh, built in the early 1900s for the World Expo, full of glass. So you can expect what temperature it was inside. But when we came in, there was a huge uh, billboard standing with a quote with the following message. By road alone, we transport over 8 billion tons of goods annually, which is uh, similar to a million Eiffel Towers around the world. A million Eiffel Towers. The question is, how can we do this more sustainable and meet growing demands? Ladies and gentlemen, I was, um, for the organizing of the truck platooning challenge, I was uh, invited several times at the senior management of APM terminals in Rotterdam Harbor. APM terminals is the highest automated com container terminal of the world. And we had several times discussions with the management, and they told us that the 12 million containers now coming down in Rotterdam for transportation to hinterland, so to Germany and to your country, is going to double within a decade. And we are not going to double our infrastructure. Our infrastructure has reached the limits of their abilities. But there are more challenges to overwin. 75% of what we move is going by road. One third of the lorries driving through Europe move air. They are empty. And if we do nothing, the congestion costs will rise in 2020 with more than 40%. And besides that, we signed a, last December in Paris an important climate agreement because we live on the earth of our grandchildren. And we learned all from a global company like Unilever that sustainability and profitability can go hand in hand in a win-win approach like we learned from Stephen Covey. Dear friends, we have a serious problem. In the coming years, we have to realize a huge challenge. Implementing smart mobility, new systems, new intelligence transport systems, and not just for fun, not just for hobby, but for contributing to our higher social goals like mobility, sustainability, accessibility, and safety. Because we don't want to lower ourselves in insanity, like we learned from Albert Einstein years ago, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Albert Einstein learned us, don't solve problems on the same level they are incurred. And that means a systemic change. A systemic change um, for the transition from doing the same things better to doing new things together with others. And that really is difficult, dear friends. But easy problems aren't there. It, and it asks for leadership. And the only stupid thing we can do now is waste this opportunity. Let's learn from Peter Drucker, the famous guru. He's told us, in times of turbulence, the biggest danger is to act with yesterday logic. So we need to make progress. The world of tomorrow starts today, starts here. So, and for that reason, we organized a truck platooning challenge, as you can see on this map. 
And uh, people would ask, what is truck platooning? Well, truck platooning is, in, in fact, safe and legal tailgating. Lorries in Polonaise, Wi-Fi connected. But I'm going to show you by a small video of one minute what really is the benefit of truck platooning. One high potential solution is truck platooning. Trucks slipstreaming very close behind one another. Truck platooning is made possible by using a combination of different technologies. Equipped with radar, camera and GPS technology, the trucks know their precise location. The trucks communicate by wireless vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, which reduces their individual response times to almost zero and allows them to drive very close together safely. Truck platooning has many advantages. Platoons take up less space and don't overtake. In the future, platoons as a whole may overtake one another, in particular in hilly terrain. This optimizes road activity and minimizes traffic jams. Driving so close together also decreases the air drag, resulting in less fuel consumption and fewer CO2 emissions. In order to show that it is not a Vista, we organized under the umbrella of our Dutch EU presidency the Truck Platooning Challenge. With six convoys of all truck manufacturers, so DAF, Daimler, Iveco, MAN, Scania and Volvo, we drove in platoons through Europe and our public roads, just to put irreversible steps and to show that it's possible, not from a desk, because we all know a desk is the most dangerous place from which to view the world. Um, and that's um, nothing new. We call it, at the moment, we call it Agile Scrum. But 2,000 years ago, Julius Caesar learned us, it's better to create than to learn. Creating is the essence of life. And that's the reason why we put steps in the innovation life cycle of the concept of truck platooning. And it all was very much supported by my minister, Melanie Schulz van Hagen. She signed, together with the other 27 European transportation ministers in Amsterdam last April, the Declaration of Amsterdam. And for that reason, we put, it's the first time we put uh, smart mobility on the political agenda, where it belongs, because it is a tough, difficult um, issue. Our next step is organizing real-life test cases, integrated in the logistic business process of shippers like Ahol Dalhuizen, like Jumbo, like Unilever and like Heineken. The wheels will be on the road before the end of 2017, and it will all be focused on cycling with our training wheels in 2020. And that's the best evidence we realized a breakthrough in implementing next generation mobility in Europe. But, um, dear friends, what's the, what's the secret of this success? Why did it work here? Why was everybody so enthusiastic? And how was it possible that the live stream of the landing of the platoons on April the 6th in Rotterdam Harbour was viewed more than 250,000 times? And why was it I invited for this fantastic TEDx happening? The answer is network leadership, the power to handle beyond the shadow of our own kingdom. We call it dignified triple helix. In fact, it's not more than an equal partnership between four different stakeholders, the government, the market, knowledge institutes, and the environment. All focused shoulder to shoulder on the same goal, with benefits for all participants, in a win-win mode, to quote Stephen Covey again. What we learned from former US President Harry S. Truman, it's amazing what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credits. And for that reason, we built a community, a community where all the different stakeholders from the government, from the market, from the Knowledge Institute, and from the environment all participated and all act active in a, in a mode to work on it. 
And you can imagine that in order to, uh, to enable such a horizontal cooperation between all these stakeholders where nobody is the boss, uh, in fact, if you have a traditional organization, you have an organogram, you have a boss, and there's always someone who says, this is the, the way we are going. And in a horizontal cooperation, you don't have that. You have, in fact, the customer who is the boss, but the customer has no power enough to go for the breakthrough. So for that reason, three things are really important. They are crucial for this success. The first one is a clear goal. The second one is the approach from customer experience, not from the technology, but from the demand, from the customer journey. And the third one is the common sense, let's say our habits, our social values. Let's focus on the dot on the horizon, the promised land. How does it look when it's ready? What will be the situation in 2025? And of course, it's difficult to predict the future. That's what we also learned from Peter Drucker. He said, don't predict the future, create it. Because trying to predict the future is like driving down a country road at night with no lights while looking out of the back window. <laughs> and so we, we created the future in the spirit of what we learned from Dom Helder Camara, the Brazilian archbishop. He said, if you dream alone, it still stays a dream. But if you dream together, it becomes reality. And so we, we went on with an invitational conference to work on what will be the situation in 2025, a sort of a roadmap. What kind of steps we are going to make together on the different items like technology, like legal, like user acceptance, like human behavior, traffic management, privacy and security items, and infrastructure. There still is a lot to do, but we're going to solve it together as a um, horizontal, um, horizontal cooperation. And let's be clear, if you have a vision like that, that gives you direction, that gives you energy, and that creates movement. And vision without action is daydreaming, but worse is action without vision, that's a nightmare. Um, let, let's go to the second one. The second um, issue is the, the customer journey, not a technology push, but a focus on market pool. Because let's be clear, you don't want to have a product, you want to have a performance. Not buying a lamp, but you want to have light. No heater, but heat or climate. You don't want a car, but you want mobility. Um, and, and let's quote, for that reason, Steve Jobs, the man who was responsible for selling more than a billion iPhones. We all have them. And he said, you've got to start with the customer experience and work back towards the technology and not the other way around. And then for the third part, the shared values. What are the habits? How are we working in a horizontal cooperation? First, start with the end in mind, like we made here with this roadmap. Second one, what I already said, is focus on a shared goal. The third one is value creation in terms of citizens. Uh, the, th the fourth one is a link with the innovation to the business model. The, the fifth is Confucius proof, like Confucius learned on 50, uh, 25 years, uh, 2,500 years ago. Write it down, I'll forget it, show it, and I remember the bit, let me feel it, I embrace it. And the last one is, we have to make progress, so build a bridge while walking across, across it. Let me summarize, ladies and gentlemen. It's difficult to co conclude, but the core is the transformation. Transformation from centralized values like co command, control, and communication to new values as trust, as trust connection, and craftsmanship with a natural balance between top-down and bottom-up. And that starts here, today, now, with you, in your own cycle of influence, because we all know that what you want to candle in others must first burn into yourself. Let me finish with the famous quote of Steve Jobs. The people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Thank you very much.